Hey guys, it's Viron from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are having one of those let's talk, discuss about stuff videos. I did one two weeks ago, I think. And that, or maybe three weeks, I'm not really sure anymore. Um, I did that talking about sketchbooks and why you should keep one. I'll link that up right here in this corner somewhere here. Just click on see to that if you want to watch that video. Um, that's sort of like the part one since we're, we're coming from the sketchbook to a thing you do in the sketchbook. You know, the, just just watch it, I guess. <laughs> so we're talking about thumbnails today and I'm not talking about YouTube thumbnails. I am talking about thumbnailing your art and how it would help you as an artist. If you're a more younger artist, maybe you're just starting out, uh, maybe... Yeah, you're you're not quite super in the experience zone yet. I'm not quite in the experience zone as well yet. Um, I've tried a lot of mediums, but it, that's a different conversation. <laughs> uh, I feel like this would help you a lot if you're if you feel like a lot of the stuff that you draw is not what you picture in your head. So, like for example, you draw this guy holding ah there goes his hand. That was not part of the that was not supposed to be part of the video, Bobby Coon. Okay, let's say he was you were you were drawing a guy with this pose. Let's do the <laughs> let's do the Gundam pose that they meme a lot nowadays, but let's say he's drawing this pose. And you want him in this kind of background. That's what you picture in your head, but you end up with a pose that's super wonky or like he, he maybe he looks like this instead when you actually draw him uh this is what thumbnailing can help you do and it would help you a lot with composition if you feel like a lot of your drawings actually don't turn out as good as when you thought about it in your head like you think oh why does that suddenly look so boring and this looked a lot more fancier and cooler when i was thinking up of this this particular piece why is this happening the thumbnails are here for you. So, let's talk definitions. Thumbnails are fast, loose, mini versions of your final piece. They're tiny sketches that you draw before you actually draw. Now, they're meant to be small. That's the reason why they're called thumbnails. Um, or, like, they're supposed to be tiny. They're not supposed to take up much time, much space, much energy. They're there. To help you get any creative juice or energy out and i'll just show you examples as we go along i'll insert clips from old videos uh these are parts that i cut out because of time constraints and stuff so i save them all up and you'll be seeing clips inserted here so why should you do thumbnails it's a sketch before the sketch and i'll be showing you examples of that i did not thumb mark my stuff before I did this video, oh no, you'll be seeing this is supposed to be a secret until then because I'm not done with the sketchbook yet. Let's see. All right here, let's start with Floresi's Forget Me Not. So, this is a thumbnail. It's still pretty big to be honest. A thumbnail can be like this, like half this size to be honest, but I like drawing big sometimes and I like usually drawing on top of the thumbnail already, but we'll get into that some other time. So I did this thumbnail, I wanted her front facing, I wanted her hand like this, I wanted maybe flowers falling or populating the background, um, and I kind of already liked this composition in my head. When I drew it out, it solidified further, and I drew this piece. Whoops, it's out of focus. There. I did this piece, uh, which is just a tiny version. A more detailed version of the head to see if I wanted to do this flower on the face thing. I decided not to and I ended up with this bigger version which is the sketch already. So from here to here, this took maybe maximum an hour, probably even faster uh, if I didn't throw the flowers but it's not supposed to take a lot of time. Uh, and the point number two is that it helps you quickly see if the composition in your head actually looks good. In my case, I was happy with this composition, so I went with it. 
Let's see if I can find something else. Some other, some other thumbnail. There's not much thumbnails in here yet because uh, I'm not done with the sketchbook yet. Let's look for the Lancelot piece I did. Oh, wait, uh, Lancelot, come back. There. So with this Lancelot piece, um, I went, so I, I usually draw the size of the canvas or the proportions of the canvas. In this case, I was using a watercolor sketchbook. In the flower series, I was using this. So I approximate the, the ratio of this and try to draw it out here, more or less. But since this is a longer canvas, it's, it, has, it, has, it has more space vertically. So I first wanted to go with the front-facing view. Uh, I decided that that might be too boring. I think maybe a post like this. But I decided that's really boring. It's similar to Beediver. So I went with the side view. And this is what actually went with the final piece. So this is, this is what I was talking about with composition. I wanted him to be the main center. I wanted him to, do, you know, to, to look outward, away from the viewer, outside, towards something you don't know. I wanted this, like, dark area here that seems to be creeping into him. That's a reference to the Fate lore, if you don't know it, but that's that. Let's see if I can find something else. So my, my actually third my third point. Man, I'm going to this video quickly. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to quickly try other compositions. So as I mentioned, that this is basically it. I didn't like this. It looked good in my head, to be honest. It looked super cool in my head with slow motion um, cloth falling and all of that. But when I drew it out, it turned out super boring. So I changed it up. Here with be diver. With be diver. Now this is one of my mistakes. I tend to sketch a lot right away. I like this pose in my head and then I realized that the, the arm orientation is wrong. Like this should be his normal arm. His egg alarm is here. So I noted that down and then I drew him facing the other way. Just because I wanted to draw a liver more. And that's some that's a thumbnail. That's me doing this. And I ended up sketching randomly. And then more sketches. This this particular piece is a mess. <laughs> uh, with this one, yeah, with this one, I drew this, and then I tried to do more detail. This is the mermaid one, actually. And then I went to the final piece. Sometimes your sketches or your thumbnails don't need to be this detailed. I just like more or less knowing how the elements would interact already. But your thumbnails can be super duper quick. I'll be showing you the thumbnails that I used to do in college. These were required from us from every class. Um, we had to do a lot and they had to be super fast. And we still had to do the piece also in the class. So that's the entire thing. And this, this will actually lead to my next point. Okay, so this is not exactly a thumbnail. This is already a very well defined sketch and color blocking and all of that eh, i just broke the, the page even more eh. there so because we weren't used to doing thumbnails yet uh our prof had us do one page a concept so he gave us a concept of what we wanted to draw of what of what how we interpret a certain theme and i did this sketch and I added notes on how I wanted to do it. And this is also why sketchbooks are useful. I talked about this in the other video as well. <laughs> and because I wasn't used to it, I did one page a concept. So I did this and then I thought of, hey, let's do one variation, which is this, which is a lot smaller already. And as you can see, uh, from there I learned to do smaller and more looser thumbnails so as you can see that is that isn't detailed at all I, at first i even tried doing it with a with a pencil but i just slowly switched to a pen to get the composition and the idea out i went with this uh concept and yeah so we were required to do a lot of 
sketches. I think you can require to do 10 for this one. So the idea is to exhaust your brain of any possible idea or concept or way of expression of that particular piece. If it's more of an illustration, like what I do with my fan art or with my um, usual pieces, you can usually make do with one, two, three at most sketches. But if it's something, or thumbnails rather, but if it's something more conceptual, sometimes you can go as far as 10. You're, you were required to do 10 just to push our brain. And the next piece is even more intense. Actually, you were done. We actually have 12. I guess I really pushed to do 12. I guess. This is another piece. It is for the final piece. And you were pushed to do 12. And as you can see at the start, it was similar. And I started changing the idea a bit. Uh, from there, I branched out to this idea. And then I thought of a road. Let's switch it to. Okay, like maybe I, I don't like this piece so much. I switched to this concept with the mask. And then from the mask, I switched to this masks hanging on mirrors. And then I thought, hey, this can have like a watery, watery background, which leads to this one, which leads to this one, which leads to this one. And this one is like a spin off of this one. So that's how you get your thumbnails. They're super fast, quick of ideas. They're like snaps of ideas that shouldn't take too much time. To mentally process and you can actually do a lot with them you can get a lot of compositions and pieces out of them and as you can see they're super duper sketchy they look quite different from the final piece i went with this one i'll see if i can grab it i wonder if i hit it though let me see so this one was an oil painting it's humongous so i wonder if i can pull out the camera we've been doing this a lot with these sketchbook things yeah so this is an oil painting it's on a rather big canvas and i wonder if youtube will <laughs> will censor me for drawing butts <laughs> but they're old it's it's fictional butts <laughs> so the concept was to have them hanging on the mirrors but when I was doing the piece, I felt like it was too empty. So still, you don't need to stick to your thumbnails. You don't need to stick to your sketches all the way, always. So I drew this person with a bent neck. Kind of creepy. The proportion's off, but whatever. I don't care at this point. <laughs> so he's holding the mask. And the idea of the mask stayed. And I just conveyed the difference through the backgrounds. And I still gave him the water, what the water thing, even though it's more murky looking. And I went with my typical galaxy background. But that's how um from that tiny from that tiny sketch over here to this huge thing over here, that's what thumbnailing ah uh, sorry. That's what thumbnailing can do. Let's clamp you back in. Let's put this thing back. Actually, Actually, I'll also show you the other thumbnails that I showed earlier. So this was supposed to be this was supposed to show a concept of the difference between reality and um, fantasy, I guess. And because I'm very fond of RPG-esque things, uh, I went with this concept actually, something similar. I don't think I have the final sketch for it because I sketched it on the piece itself. But it's actually pretty dark. I don't know where this is where this is coming from. Um, I'm not usually this dark. So as you can see, um, more conceptual pieces tend to force you to do more stuff that you don't usually do. I don't. This is how you usually draw. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> so it's meant to, to, to depict. Um, a huge difference so the, maybe this person is a really nice cool elf girl even though her hp is super low already so it's meant to depict like a game world damn i used to draw this 
I'm impressed with myself. It's not that good, but I used to be able to do this. I need to get back into oil painting and acrylic. This acrylic, I think. And the other one was oil. This acrylic. Based on how watery it is, but I need to get back into conceptual pieces. It's starting to crackle though. That's sad. But and I got off topic. So the deal was that with the, with the, with the thumbnail, yeah. As you can see, I actually I really went with someone trying to rip or trying to get into the game world, and then the variation was that they had NPC members and they they were trying to reach out to those NPCs or or party members. I guess those are you people too. The final idea became that um, they ended up alone i guess what's happening to my mouse there we go so they ended up alone and they tried to go to the other world through the screen it's kind of sad and it's honestly kind of dark i don't know where that's coming from so yeah um essentially my last point was that you could choose your composition um that you like the most from your thumbnails and it gives you a lot of options so say you weren't contented with the original idea you had i switched to this idea instead because i feel like that's much more interesting as a concept and that's what thumbnailing can do and this is something I, as this um a process that i've carried ever since college and even though i don't do the 12 pieces anymore because not a lot of my actual normal works are conceptual they still help me out in terms of fleshing things out so like let's say I, I'm, if you watch my video videos you would you would have seen like my my drawing for my best friend it started out with the front facing pose i switched it to the back facing pose instead sometimes your thumbnails don't even need to be in a canvas it can be as tiny as that and it, it then involves to that they're meant to flesh out your pieces. Um, 17 minutes, we're good. And we're almost done with the video, actually. We're, we're done with the video, essentially. I would recommend that, number one, you do keep sketchbooks. You can see just how much it helps me, or at least me personally, you know, just finalize concepts, get ideas out, um, make my pieces better before I actually draw them. And then in them, I do thumbnails and sketches that would further flesh out the piece. Because sometimes I tend to think in like this um, 3D way esque. I'm not, I'm not saying that I understand 3D space, but sometimes I can actually imagine imagine my pieces moving like maybe in a slow GIF, slow animated GIF, like that. And when I put them down in 2D flat form, they don't look as cool or as as interesting. So the thumbnails are meant to help you tweak that idea a bit to look better when you actually do draw them. That's the end of the video. I'm starting to lose my voice. I've been speaking for uh, 18 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, look forward to my next video. And I hope, you guys, I hope this helped you in a way. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Leaventart. And I will see you around.